What's up, friends and family? Thanks for joining me out here in the woods, hanging out, pretending I'm a nomad. Sometimes I wish I was. Maybe you do too. Get away from everything and everyone and enjoy the outdoors. Well, we're talking about a nomad knife with the Joker Nomad. Just look at that hunk of steel. Made in Spain out of Bowler N695 steel Rockwell 58 with a full convex edge. This comes from the factory with a convex edge, guys, and it is epic. I'm telling you right now. Now, if you're not familiar with Joker knives, I wasn't either until very recently. Uh, I had seen one of their designs and thrown it in my Amazon cart, actually, and it had sat there for about a year. Didn't really do a lot of research, just saw that it was a Spanish company. And when I did my research, I decided, you know what? I saw the deal. I wanted to try out something new. I picked it up. That was the Lynx, and it blew my mind. And so in contacting and talking to the company when they were sending me the Kydex for that, they sent me the Nomad as well. And as an added bonus, we're gonna be giving one away in this video that I'll ship worldwide. So stay tuned throughout this video and we'll let you know how you can get entered and win. Uh, and we'll pick somebody at random a little later in the video. But uh, it's kind of a compact brute of a knife in this Nomad design. Um, and we're gonna just jump into it today. Let's see what it has to offer, what this convex grind does, um, you know, what are its capabilities, what are some competitive options. So you can kind of get a feel for this bigger, kind of beefier um, fixed blade that they're producing, but how it kind of competes with what else is on the market. So let's go ahead, start getting lost in the Joker Nomad. All right, folks, let's go ahead and start with the business end, the blade portion. Very unique. Uh, it stands out from most of my knife collection in this kind of snub nose portion up front here. Uh, at first, I was a little concerned about that. I was like, is this going to be like a weird, like modded Tanto kind of style? But it actually cuts. Oh, I bet you that's dope for this. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. It, it does amazingly when you're wanting to do carving for like notches or if you're doing out like maybe a bowl or something like that or a spoon. That, that angle just worked so well and the completely flat spine, there's no swedge or anything. You can put a lot of pressure on there and it just did awesome on that tip and it's very robust as well. So it's a very strong, robust tip with that kind of fat spoon. I don't know how to describe it. It looks like a spoon kind of nose. Um, still able to pierce and do what you need to. I wouldn't rate it you know, as like a tactical knife or something like that, but it does so well with a lot of work. And I was very pleased with that because I didn't know exactly what to expect. <laughs> dude, this thing is a machine. Oh my gosh, dude. With that aspect to the blade. And then we have that nice full tang all the way through at 0.2 on the thickness, according to what I was able to run with my little caliper. So very robust for about a five inch blade. It's like 4.9 from the handle to the tip, um, but not gonna be ultra heavy at 9.8 ounces for the knife itself. So still coming in at, I would argue under a survival knife weight, but it's really getting close to that. It was able to chop surprisingly well if you had to, to kind of make like a, a couple tent pegs if you needed to, or a spear or something like that, um, and hack a, a good size branch, you know, like the size of your wrist off of a tree or something if you needed to, it would absolutely be able to do that. Uh, and again, with that blade shape and the grinding of a high saber grind with that convex edge, which just is for the style insane it was just insane guys regardless if i was doing like food prep it did so well for me with a lot of food prep but just all the work that we put this through for batoning it was robust enough to do really good batoning of like three and a quarter to three and a half inch uh size logs no issue whatsoever even with twists in it and stuff uh you know side splitting for notches it did super good with that and you're not going to be concerned about like am i going to hurt this knife in any way and then the finer work because of how the edge geometry works together is just so so good and the steel of that uh, bowler n695 uh, steel is really well done it's going to hold a really good edge very very good edge um, rust resistant and i didn't see it being overly oh, yeah, brittle or chippy which sometimes you can get with that type of steel and it's basically the best type you know from the the bowler factory so 
great in every aspect to that as definitely like a do everything camp knife. And in a pinch, you could do a lot of quote unquote survival heavier tasks if needed with this design. You're getting it in a stainless steel where normally you'd be getting it with um, a high carbon, which is I believe a great option for those looking for that stainless steel. That 90 degree spine as well will just launch sparks. It's great for not only scraping, but getting fires started if need be. And how about that sheath? Now, really good heavy duty leather. I'm very happy with the quality of the leather that they chose. It's not flimsy. Uh, you got a little drainage hole, good stitching all the way through, a couple lashing points so you could lash it different ways to packs or even run like a leg lanyard if you wanted to kind of strap tight to your thigh, different things like that. Very well done. I'm gonna hold it in place. It's not gonna accidentally slide out and fall on you. You can obviously kind of wet form it if you want to. So that's all super good. You will get the option and it'll be a pricing issue. You know, the more expensive, if you want the matching fire steel, which throws sparks so well, it's great, but it will match the handle uh, color that you decide to go with. Uh, or you can get a version that doesn't have that, that's just not your thing and that's something you just wanna save a little money on, that is an option there. I do like that the belt loop is flush with the handle so it's not sticking up really far, you know, and then riding up into your ribs. So all of that, everything is fantastic in that aspect except for these button snaps. I really wish these weren't there. Um, when my buddy Mike was carrying it uh, when we were hiking, these came undone um, multiple times on him without much difficulty. We were even hiking, we stopped and it was disconnected and just barely hanging on. We could have easily lost it on the trail. So the two options uh, that I would say is either, this is a recommendation from one of our viewers, uh, to put some super glue and you could glue down those buttons and that should be enough uh, to hold those in place and not be an issue. Uh, or you can do like an LT right uh, dangler that I've showed you guys before. Those are about 30 bucks, but that will relieve the friction and tension and pressure maybe when you're pushing and sitting down, different things like that and breaking those snaps. So there's a few options there for you. I hope in the future these buttons are removed and they start just sewing these on. If those, if it was just sewn on and stitched on right there, it'd be zero complaints with the sheath. As it is, the buttons need to be modded in some way in order to never be concerned about losing the knife, which is important. So this Nomad just wins again when it comes to the handle, guys. I mean, the I, I'm so, regretful, I guess, that I just haven't reviewed and haven't gotten my hands on Joker knives till now, eight years into doing the channel. So we got micarta handle scales here, obviously again, full tang. These are pinned in handle scales. We got those red liners that really make the, the knife pop. You can get a couple different, you know, color combinations on those micarta, uh, lanyard hole, really good. No squarey, squared off, like, uh, blockiness, completely contoured. Every single angle is completely contoured. The fit and finish is bananas i love every aspect to it great fit and finish on this knife uh zero lip anywhere i mean so well done feels great in the hand large handle meaning in length at 4.7 inches overall doesn't taper anywhere so you can see there all that real estate i have even when i back up here look at all that real estate i got going on with my large size hands as you guys know a little bit of flare there so good wrist flick uh, I even like that it's not scalloped near the neck. A lot of knives do that, but then you end up actually having a narrow front end where your finger and thumb meet. And sometimes that can cause hot spots or just like a lack of leverage. This has full all the way through and kind of pro produces like this uh, little lip right here that I put my thumb and I kind of squeeze like that. And then you have really good control over the whole knife. And then an exposed rear pommel out the back that I definitely used as um, like a striking instrument, you know, to hammer in a tent peg or something like that. So super pleased. Um, the thickness on the handle is 0 0.9. It's almost an inch thick all the way through. I mean, this is a beefy handle, but again, the knife isn't super heavy at just under 10 ounces for this style. But for a camp knife where a lot of them are still kind of narrow or, you know, just have maybe a flare in the middle or a bulge in the middle and then you know it's tapered on the other side this is full all the way through so we've been looking for that in your camp knives this absolutely has that and is one of the better fuller larger handles on this size of knife i've seen and tested to date and as we jump into pricing here real quick i just want to run into becker bk2 just for size perspective it's very close to the becker bk2 in overall sizing handle length all of that, obviously the Becker BK2 being bigger at a quarter inch thick, heavier at about a pound, but it's almost like, to be honest with you, if you were to ask me 
how does this operate outside of the chopping and splitting? This will still split, the BK2 will still split and chop better just because of the weight and the thickness. But in every other aspect, um, you're, it feels a lot like, the, the Nomad feels a lot like a Becker BK2 um, in just its capability. And I did just want to run in the BK16 for some perspective. It is slightly bigger than the BK16. It will be thicker um, as well. And just to show you the difference in handles here, if I can, hopefully this knife will, or it'll focus. You can just see the tapering like I was talking about in the neck uh, and stuff on the BK-16, which isn't bad, but the um, Nomad here is just so much beefier and bigger and fuller that you don't always see on these kind of camp knives that are on the market. Now pricing fluctuates all over the place kind of because there are multiple features and that determines price. Not only from different handle materials, they have micarta, but I believe you can get them in some wood handle options as well. The N695 steel or the Sandvik 14C28N version that is also available and then fire steel, no fire steel option. So, and I've seen it go for as low as about $100 and up to about $130 on average over on Amazon. Again, we'll have links for you guys below. You can check out this knife as well as many other Joker knives that uh, I'm in either currently testing or that really are connecting with me um, just in their you know features and designing. So those will be below as well as Blue Ridge uh, knives, I believe, also carries them uh, here in America that you can check out as well for what you're getting with this knife, I think is a great value for the performance and features that we're seeing. All right, folks, so we're gonna pause right here to discuss the giveaway. This is gonna be a 24 hour giveaway from the moment this video goes live for the next 24 hours. You can get entered into win by leaving a comment below and then I will randomly pick a comment from the comments below. I'll give you 24 hours to message me back. If you haven't messaged me back, I'll pick somebody else. It's that simple. And again, I'll ship it anywhere in the world. As long as your country will receive knives shipped to you. I know some places in Europe, you can't do that anymore, which is really dumb. But with that, this is how you get entered into win. If you were going to get lost for a week somewhere in the world, where would you like to get lost with this Nomad knife if you were to win? For me, it would be the Never Summer Wilderness outside of Rocky Mountain National Park. It's a beautiful area, pretty secluded, uh, and that would be a great spot. And I believe this knife would serve me very well there. So just throw a comment below, one per person, please. Uh, and then 24 hours from the day that this goes live, I will be picking someone at random, putting a comment below. I'll pin the winner's name as well and do all that like we've done here many times before. And you'll get a brand new in the packaging, never use Nomad with the N695 steel. You like it? Dude, they're beautiful knives. Man, I, I, every time I use this tool and all the other jokers uh, that we have here at the channel that I'm currently using and testing, I'm really impressed with the craftsmanship. And for me, with particularly this kind of snub nose, which I wasn't quite sure of with performance, but has really just worked so well as we've talked about. And then that convex and um, the still good pricing and, and just the performance of this blade uh, it is really awesome. And, and you know, we're giving one away. Uh, this one is actually going to my buddy who's behind the camera right now. That guy right there. <laughs> but I'm heavily contemplating buying another one for myself to put in regular rotation, guys. Because, I mean, this is compact but very robust. And that grinding just really sets it apart. So, and it's just got enough features, quality, and designing that really, in my opinion, does set it apart from a lot of other tools in this size range, in this price range with stainless steel. So really digging uh, and continuing to dig what I see coming out of the Joker factory over in Spain. We've got some more coming down the line with some more giveaways coming down the line as well. So good luck to all of you participating in the giveaway. And guys, till next time, stay lost, but stay safe as you wander around in this world. And always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.